I've had a couple of questions about installing Composer globally on a Mac. So I'm gonna walk through uh, some of the common problems, how to actually get this set up. And then finally, we're gonna to resort to using Homebrew uh, if nothing else works. So the first thing is, uh, of course, the reason we'd want to install Composer globally is because we don't really want to, every single time we download this, go ahead and pull in the composer.phar file and have to run that on its own. It's a little bit longer and uh, kind of gets in the way if you need to pull in lots of dependencies. So at the moment, I don't have Composer installed globally at all. So if I go ahead and run it here, of course, it's not going to work. If we just go over to any kind of directory, so let's go over to www and make a directory in here, uh, just called test maybe, go into this, let's pull down Composer uh, just to make sure. Now, uh, when you are running this, uh, make sure you always come over to this page first of all, because uh, just a, as a warning here, uh, the install code is subject to change. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this all in here, go ahead and run this to unlink or delete the composer setup file. And of course, from here now, I can either run composer or php composer.phr to go ahead and run composer. But of course, it still is not installed globally. So I'm sure you know this if you're watching this video, when I'm gonna show you how to set this up now. Okay, so let's go back to our home directory here. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and echo out our path just to make sure that we have user local bin inside of here. Now, if you don't see this in here at all, you're gonna to need to export it to your path and then go ahead and refresh your bash profile. So to do this, you would go ahead and export path and in here, use dollar path. And then in here, you would just define user local bin and that will go ahead and add it to your bash profile. So your bash profile lives within this directory that we're in just at the moment. So to kind of refresh this, what you're gonna to need to do is just run source and then bash profile. If you wanna go ahead and open that up in your favorite text editor, go ahead and have a look in this file and you should see it in there now. So that's the kind of first step. What we're now going to do is do exactly what we're gonna do here, but we're gonna copy this over to that directory. So there's a couple of additional options we need to pass in uh, when we are installing Composer. Now the first uh, line here just goes ahead and pulls down the Composer setup file. The second one verifies it, which is really important. So let's go ahead and pull this over as well. That's all fine. And the next one is the actual setup itself. Now, by default, this will copy it to the current directory, which of course we don't want. So we're gonna go ahead and run this, but we're gonna provide a couple of additional options. So the first one is the installation directory. Of course, we now know that what we're gonna do, because we have this in our Bash profile, we're gonna go ahead and install this to use a local bin. Now, really importantly, if we go ahead and run this, that's gonna work fine, but let's just open up a new tab and we will go and look inside of there. So let's go over to user local bin. And of course that should be without the home directory in there. Let's go ahead and do a listing on this and you should see Composer just inside of here, but it's got a PHR extension. So now what we can technically do anywhere is run composer.phar even if it's not within that current directory. But that's not really what you want. So in this case, let's rerun this command and also give in the file name option and go ahead and call this composer. And of course, what you could do is rename that file, but this is generally a little bit easier. So that's kind of re-downloaded it. And if we go ahead and do a directory listing over here, you can see we've got composer and composer.phar. So now that we've done that, let's finish up by just unlinking or deleting the composer setup file. And now pretty much wherever you are, so if we go over to www test, we can run composer and we now have it installed globally. So that will pretty much be ready for you to use wherever you want now. Now, a lot of Composer setup stuff is dependent on your version of your operating system and also the version of Composer itself. So the other option is to use Homebrew. Now, I already have Homebrew downloaded and installed. So what I'm gonna do is just come over to here and I'm gonna remove Composer and I'm gonna remove composer.phar, so they're no longer in there. If I come back over to that test directory and I run Composer, we now see there's no such file or directory. So the other option then is to use Homebrew. Go ahead and install it using this command and just go ahead and simply run brew install composer and that will pretty much handle everything for you. Okay, now that's done, you might need to follow any other instructions that you're given over here. But if we come back over to our test directory, in fact, we're already inside of that, we can go ahead and run composer, even though I've deleted it, 
and we now have it installed globally. So they are a couple of options to get Composer installed globally. Hopefully that helps and uh, you can now just use Composer on its own, which of course is a lot easier.